One of the reasons why your video might be boring is because you're not filming with the edit in mind. In fact, you're just capturing footage for the sake of capturing footage. I'm here at my parents' house trying to film a YouTube video and I don't have any of my stuff. Where's my things? I don't have my studio. I need my lighting. Hi there. So you're probably thinking montages, quick sequences. We've all seen those videos and yet they still feel substanceless. They kind of still feel boring. The reason for that is there's no story. There's no emotional attachment. So the first thing you need to think of is how will emotion cut into all of my motion? One of my number one things that I try to capture early on within filming anything is audio because that will be the foundations to what I'm filming. So for example, if you take this scene uh, from my latest documentary, The Fisherman, and you remove the sort of dialogue from Nick, it's just sort of a series and sequence of shots. But if we implement his audio dialogue over top of this, now there's a story we're being told. As far back as I can remember, I've always been connected to fishing. If you shoot cool visuals, maybe you can get good audio. If you get good audio, maybe you can shoot cool visuals to that. One of the most frustrating things as an editor is to go into an edit where the shots are too short. There's nothing you can do with them. And of course, the vast majority of shots are under five seconds when you edit them together. Most of the time, if you're editing a sequence, they're probably only gonna be two seconds. That said, always film shots that go for at least 10 seconds long. Anything under that is difficult for an editor because within that window, even though you have only five seconds that you're probably going to use, it's nice to have some wiggle room, some handles. Maybe I like the last part of the 10 seconds where I'll choose my half, or perhaps maybe the beginning is really good. But chances are when you're capturing something, you're gonna be in like crazy shooter mode. You're like, oh my God, I gotta film everything. Don't think about getting everything. Think about getting one thing really well. And once you got it, move forward. The editor is gonna love that. I've always felt like I need to go to the beat of my own drum. The best way to immerse an audience into an experience is by using auditory editing, meaning cutting on sound effects. So what I typically do when I shoot any sort of sequence is I have my microphone uh, set to a little bit louder uh, when I'm filming a montage or sequence, and then I'll capture the specific sounds that I need that I feel like will cut into that scene. Does it feel like you're in a music video? I feel like this entire time I've been shooting a music video in my parents' backyard. All the neighbors are probably like, Zach, what the frig are you doing? And I built a, you know, a food delivery empire for about 10 years. If you just have visuals and with jumpy music, it's not gonna feel as good as what it feels like with the sound effects woven into it. It's also gonna make it feel like you were actually there. Finally, one of the best things is it's easier to edit with. Sometimes editing a montage or sequence is tough if it's just shots kind of weaving together. You're like, cool, I just had this cool whip pan or this cool shot that flies in. Instead, if you have sounds, you're like, I'm gonna cut on this hit. I'm gonna cut on this reel in. I'm gonna cut on this smash. Leaning up against a fence is probably one of the most awkward things you can do. There's no nice way to hang out by a fence. What's one of the most primary things in an edit outside of cutting? Music and sound. Now we talked a lot about sound, but music is one of the major things that pieces together a scene. One of the big things that I do is I put headphones on and get myself in the space of the cinematic vision that I wanna go for. If you're working on a project, you have a few days before going on set, either chat with the client that you're working with and being like, what sort of music are you going for? Or start building out your own soundtrack. A lot of music platforms like Musicbed, for example, have apps that you guys can use, go into it and start building out a catalog of songs. I've created a couple 
playlist for some short films that I'm working on, but it doesn't matter if it's a YouTube video, client project, or some sort of science fiction short film that you're working on, having a playlist that you can live within works really well. And honestly, one of the reasons why this works so well is because then you have the metronome in your head for whatever you're filming, right? So if you think about it, this song's like this pulsing sound. Well, then you know to shoot shots that kind of have more pulsingness to them. Or if they're like really long and draw it out, maybe you want to do more long and draw it out cinematic shots. So whatever it is, think of the music, think of the edit, give your edit a break, get into it. Every part of the process of whatever you're making should always feed the next. So when you're in the writing process, write as if you're writing for the shots. And when you're shooting, try to shoot for the edit. And when you're editing, try to edit for the premiere. Always think one step ahead in the process and you're always gonna help the next department move forward. And if you can lead yourself to that like final premiere spot, you're in a golden spot, pony boy. <laughs> That's it for today's video. Thank you for listening and learning. Let me know if there's anything you would like me to talk more about in future videos and getting back into doing these tutorials and stuff because they're a whole lot of fun. Also, just because I can, uh, I wanna do a quick plug for my book, The Unoriginal Guide to Originality. If you guys are creatives, filmmakers, YouTubers, whoever's out there who's trying to find their voice in an over-influenced world, I know I have, uh, then I wrote this whole book around it, giving sort of my top 20 rules of finding authenticity in a very uh, influenced market. So give that a gander and uh, let me know what you think. If you buy it, give me a review. It would freaking mean the world. And uh, for those of you who are still watching this video, I absolutely love you. And for those of you who don't aren't watching the rest of this video, you can go die. I'm just kidding. I love you guys too. I'll see you later.